Hi everyone, this is Nick from Whole Latte Love and today I'll be walking you through the initial setup of the ECM Classic of PID. So before we get started, I do want to mention this is the version with flow control, but all of the steps that I show you will be universal across the standard model and this one. So I'll be talking about how to set the PID because there's actually some really useful programming in there that you can benefit from. I'll go over the accessories that come with your machine and how those are used and cover the initial setup and priming so that you can start brewing. So let's get into it. One of the first things you really want to consider before putting your espresso machine to some serious use is going to be the quality of your water. Now, not only is that going to affect the taste of your espresso, but long term, it can affect the longevity of your investment. Water contains minerals. It's what gives it some of its taste, and it's also what can cause scale buildup inside of espresso machines. Around your house, if you've ever seen buildup, say, on your sink or your shower head, or at the bottom of your pots and pans, that's a sign that there's mineral content in your water. And that can also build up inside your machine. You've got a boiler made of metal, you've got metal plumbing, it's very hot in there, and it's a great condition to extract those minerals from the water. Now, that's what these pitchers, filters, and cartridges are here to address, extracting those minerals from water before they make their way into your espresso machine. We at Whole Latte Love recommend a range of products from BWT who we've partnered with to provide safe solutions for water filtration that ensure not only that you're protecting the longevity of your machine, but also that your water is tasting its best. Let's take a look at some of those options now. One of my favorite water filtration options is the BWT Penguin Pitcher. So, this is going to do a couple of things that will benefit your espresso. Now, not only is this filter cartridge going to remove flavor contaminants from the water, like chlorine or dirt or fine particles, but it uses the same magnesium exchange technology found in BWT's Best Save, Best Cup, or Best Max Premium cartridges. What that does is there's an ion exchange that replaces calcium with magnesium and that magnesium is going to go a long way to improve the flavor of your espresso as well. See, BWT has optimized this for hot beverage preparation, especially for espresso. Now, when it comes to actually maintaining the pitcher and getting that cartridge switched out as needed, the timer on top of this will count the number of fills that you have, and it will remind you when it's time to replace the cartridge. And it's as simple as popping off the top, putting in a new cartridge, and you're good to start filling again. The Best Save Filter Pouch is another great affordable filtration option from BWT. Now, unlike things like the Best Cup or Best Max Premium, this is not connected to the water line of your machine or to the water inlet. Instead, this pouch simply floats in the tank, passively softening the water and removing contaminants. That makes it very straightforward to use, but with a caveat. This filter will require you to leave it in the water that you're going to brew with for 8 to 10 hours in order for that filtration to take effect. Then your water will be safe to use for brewing. So if you want something like this that's affordable but takes a little bit more time, the best case scenario would be fill your tank at night and allow the best save to do its job so your water is ready for you to use in the morning. Now as far as the fills go, BWT does recommend that for this filter pouch in particular, on a reservoir that's about three and a half liters, you can get close to 30 full reservoir fills, but that is going to come down to the hardness of your water. So you also want to make sure that you're replacing this filter pouch every two months to protect yourself from anything that might grow in the filter if it sits in your tank for too long. So in front of me here, I've got a BWT Best Cup filtration system, and I'm going to go over how to install this into the water reservoir for an ECM vibration pump machine. This is a product that you should not use with a ECM rotary pump machine, as the pump draw can be increased through pulling water straight through this filter cartridge, and it can actually damage the lifespan of the pump. So use a BWT Best Save or a Best Max Premium if you want to filter water for a rotary pump ECM machine. So what we've got here is our filter cartridge actually, and then our filter cartridge adapter. This adapter is what's going to allow us to actually connect the filter into the water line that's being pulled from the reservoir. So all we want to do is go ahead and take our suction cup here, and we can 
fit that right on the bottom of the adapter that's going to stick that to the bottom of the tank and then for our tube here we'll slip that right on over this angled fitting and it's got some ribbing so I would say maybe over the first rib down to the second one we'll get you a nice secure uh, seal on that so that's how we would prepare our adapter now I'll show you how to put it into the tank now I'm going to show you how you can connect the best cup adapter to the water inlet at the bottom of the reservoir we'll simply go ahead and guide the silicone tube over that metal inlet to securely attach the adapter. And as you can see, I've attached the adapter. You really kind of do it by feel. You can feel once the tube is secure that you've got the adapter connected. Now, what I want to do is get the adapter itself into the correct position here. So this is where you're going to need a little bit of, I would say, filter cartridge artistry. <laughs> but you can see how I've got the adapter kind of facing toward the corner. There's the water inlet for the adapter that's actually right in this corner at the lowest point in the tank. So that way we're always able to draw in water without having the tank be too low. All we want to do now is take our filtration cartridge and fit it onto the adapter. So I'm going to go ahead and push that down and I've given myself enough room and I'll give you a little trick on how to check to make sure that you've done it properly. But simply guide that in, push down firmly, and then if you can flip the reservoir upside down and the filter doesn't come out, you know that your seal is good. So then you're simply going to put this back into the machine and water will now be drawn through your filter cartridge. If you have properly secured the adapter, to replace the cartridge, all you'll need to do is reach into the reservoir and pop that out. Then put the new cartridge in to replace it, and that's how you'd maintain your best cup system. If you opt not to use a water filter in your machine, you're going to need to prepare to descale it. So in a nutshell, that's using a calibrated acid to break down the minerals that build up in your machine. This Durgal Swiss Espresso Descaling Solution is something just like that. What you do is you dilute the solution and run it through the machine. There are risks associated with this, however, and you may find in your machine's manual that the manufacturer recommends against it. Regardless of how you choose to maintain your machine, the descaler should be run through at regular intervals to prevent large quantities of scale from building up. If you have waited a long time between descaling cycles, you can free up loose pieces of calcium and other minerals and have them ultimately block passages inside the machine. So make sure that if you are going to descale, you use a product that is calibrated for espresso machines and certainly don't use vinegar. The Classica PID comes with a fairly simple assortment of accessories, but it will get you through the basics of brewing. Now, on the left here, we do have a tamper that comes with the machine. This is serviceable, but definitely something I recommend that you replace or simply go ahead and order a nice tamper when you order the machine. Move that off to the side so we can forget about it. We do have our double spout commercial chrome plated brass portafilter. So this does have the nice ECM Bakelite handle and chromed end cap. These are probably my favorite portafilters in uh, kind of the world of home espresso. Just putting that out there. We do have a nice brush here. This is used for the group. You can get coffee grounds off of the shower screen and around the gasket. So this is just a nice multi-purpose tool to have. But for our baskets, this is a 58 millimeter portafilter here. So these are all 58 millimeter baskets. That's really nice if you want to go ahead and get some upgraded accessories, say this can fit 58 millimeter precision baskets. So we do have a single and double shot that come with the machine stock. That's a nine gram and an 18 gram basket. And then we do have our back flush disc. So this guy right here, you use that for cleaning. And then in just a sec, I'll show you a nice handy place that we can store that when it's not in use. But those are the accessories you'll get stock in the box with the Classica PID. For a final note on our accessories, I want to point out that in recent times, ECM has updated the Classica PID to include a angled two-spout portafilter instead of the original straight handle. The key advantage here is going to be that it improves the ergonomics of locking the portafilter into the group. 
One other thing that you'll notice is that the portafilter's basket is more or less facing straight up as opposed to at an angle, so if you wanted, you could simply put a mat under it and tamp straight down on the counter. Another welcome improvement is the new stainless steel base tamper that's included as opposed to the original nylon style that we've got here. The key advantages are going to be not only the aesthetics with the Bakelite plastic that matches the elements on the machine and the handle on your portafilter, but also the stainless flat base, which gets you a much more solid and level tamp. But otherwise, the accessories are the same with the same baskets, brush, etc. All right, now that we've covered our accessories, we can go ahead and get the machine set up for our initial use. What we'll want to do first is remove and rinse the water reservoir. To do that, simply lift the cup tray off using our railings, and then we've got some nice space on both sides to simply lift out the reservoir. So before I put this back in the machine, I want to give it a thorough rinse, and then when I put it back in, we can flip the power switch on. If you ever try to turn the machine on with no water in the reservoir, the PID and the green light will not illuminate, so you do need some water in here. And now, let me go ahead and rinse this and bring it back to the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and get that right in there. Put my lid back on and let's head over to the front of the machine. Up front, we can see the power switch here and our PID. In just a sec, I'll go over all of the lights and switches on this machine, but first, let's get it turned on. First thing you'll notice is we do have a message that's going to appear here on the PID which says fill. So this is unique now to ECM's new PID machines and this is to guarantee that we have properly filled the boiler with water. So there's one way that we can clear this message and that's simply to put a container under our E61, lift our brew lever and run this pump for 35 seconds. Putting that down, we have now primed the boiler. So one thing to note is that if you are reading through ECM's manual during your initial setup, they do recommend that you run two to three full tanks of water through the machine, alternating through our group and the steam wand to ensure that all of the internal components have also been thoroughly rinsed before brewing. You can do this at your discretion, but I do recommend it. Now that we've got our machine filled with water, let's take a look at the different controls, lamps, and the display. So first in the bottom left corner here, we of course have our power switch and our power light. This is simply how we turn the machine on and off and it will illuminate if the machine is powered on. In the top right corner, we have a pair of switches here and a pair of LEDs. That top switch, that's the pump switch. That's how we would actually run the pump if we wanted to dispense water from the hot water wand here. So by flipping this up, we can hear the pump triggers, and then by opening the steam valve, we can dispense water. The LED next to that is the LED for the boiler heating element. So if you notice, as this light flickers, there is a small dot that flickers on the PID. That's not anything wrong with the machine. That's simply how the PID communicates to you that you are sending energy to the boiler. So these will flicker in unison, and that's regular. That's something that's just very common among PID espresso machines. Our switch below that, that's our steam switch. So that's how we would switch the machine into steam temperature. If we flip this switch up, you can see now that the, uh, the light has actually illuminated for that as well. The PID is starting to say ST for steam, and you can see that that dot on the PID is now solid because we are actively just sending a solid stream of energy to the boiler heating element to start heating the machine up to steam temperature. Flip that back down and you'll switch the machine back into brew mode. So the other thing that I wanna show you here is going to be the brew lever for our E61 group. This controls a couple of things. So the E61 is this assembly here and it's where we lock our portafilter. So if you're using the machine at home and you've gone through your initial setup, I would recommend that you keep the portafilter locked into the group at all times just so that you're actively heating it along with the rest of the components. I've got it out of the way for now so that you can see what I'm talking about. 
This is our solenoid discharge tube. This comes down from the group, so whenever you're done with a brew cycle, leftover water will get pushed down through here and into the drip tray. Right behind our E61 lever is a pump switch that will activate the pump. So if I actually press that with my finger, you'd hear the pump running. Now, when we lift this lever, it will come into contact with the switch to start brewing, but it's also gonna open this valve here to allow water to actually flow from the group. So if we just flip the pump switch and the pump turns on, you'll notice that no water comes out of the group. But if we lift the brew lever, water does, and that's because a valve has been opened that allows water to flow. And you can actually just lift this up gently and you'll see just a little bit of water that's dripping out from the latent pressure inside the boiler. So if you want, you need to make sure that this lever is always down to close this group and always lift all the way up when you want to brew. But those are the basic controls. Now I can show you some more in-depth programming with the PID. Now that I've covered the basic controls and LEDs, let's take a closer look at the PID. So I'm at kind of a weird angle here to make sure that I can show you and you can actually see what I'm doing. So to access the programming mode in the PID, we'll simply press the minus and plus buttons simultaneously. Once you're in there, you're gonna have to move fast. You've only got about a second or two to select or make changes before the PID switches back to its default display of the temperature. So when you enter the mode by pressing minus, we'll cycle through our options and pressing plus will confirm our selections. So let me just go ahead and I'll give you a rundown of what we can change, but we've got brew temperature, steam temperature, eco mode, a backflush reminder, and the degrees for the display. So that's going to be if we display in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So if you've noticed that 91 seems to be a little bit too low for espresso, well, we're in Celsius, so we're gonna change that. One other function is that if we press the plus button, we can actually shut off the PID if you don't want to see anything on the display. This little dot though will remain here to remind you that you can simply press plus again to switch that back on. So let's go ahead first and switch out of Celsius to go back into Fahrenheit. Press that, press plus, and here we are in Fahrenheit. So now though, let's go ahead. T1, that's our boiler temperature and we can go all the way up to 212 degrees or down to 176. So I'm gonna leave it at 201. Now for our steam, we can actually change, we can go all the way up to about 280 degrees, 284 is our max here, which is a little wild for steam because if you've used other ECM machines like the ECM Synchronica, you know that that only goes up to about 270. So. I'm gonna leave this here, and the PID will control the temperature once we're in steam mode. Eco mode is a mode that lets you set a timer, and so it's gonna be in 30 second increments to get us to 60, I'm sorry, 600 minutes max, and what happens is once we've hit that time, so after our last full brew cycle, the machine is gonna start counting down and will power off the heating elements. And so to get out of that, you either have to press one of the keys on the PID or flip the power switch off and then back on. But that's great if you wanna cut down on the watt draw and power usage of your machine. If we press these buttons again, oh, there we go. We'll go into clean. So this is a back flush reminder. And this lets us set a number of brew cycles that we want in order to remind us that the machine wants to be back flushed. So a brew cycle is counted as a 15 second pull on our brew lever here. So the PID will count up and if it gets to 15 seconds, that's counted as one full brew cycle. So if we get to 10, as I've programmed it, after that we'll be reminded to back flush the machine. I'll cover that in a separate segment, but the basics of how it works is you'll be asked to run 10, 15 second brew cycles with the back flush disc in place, the machine will count down for each one that you've completed so that you've used that detergent cleaner and flushed the group at least 10 times. So that's the back flush reminder. And that covers all of the different PID functions that the Classica PID has. This will also double as a shot timer for you so that you can keep an eye on the length of your extractions when brewing. 
Something that you'll want to take note of with a PID Espresso machine is that ultimately the number on the display is going to climb to your programmed temperature a little bit sooner than you may actually want to brew with the machine. What I mean by that in particular is that our PID is actually clocking the temperature inside the boiler. So that lets us know how hot the water is. But because this is an E61 group espresso machine, you're going to want to allow some time for both the E61 itself and your portafilter to heat up before you start to brew. These are solid chrome plated brass pieces here. We've got just a ton of metal and that's a great heat sink to keep your coffee hot while it's brewing, but it will also require some time in the morning to heat up to those temperatures. So even if your PID display says, say 200 for instance, if you've set it to 200, uh, to 200, we recommend that you allow the machine to rest for about 20 to 25 minutes from initial flip on before you start pulling your shots. For our last bit of interface, we're going to be taking a look at the brew pressure gauge. So this is a gauge that's taking pressure at the pump and we have to set that before shipping these machines out by adjusting something called an OPV. So the pump in these machines operates at a fixed pressure and then that pressure is regulated for brewing by a valve. Now, if you have a version of the Classica PID with flow control, you'll get an additional gauge right here at the group. And that's just showing you how the effect of your changes in flow are affecting the pressure at the group during the extraction. So if you wanna make some changes though, or even really check how your pressure is currently set, there's a couple of things that we can do. Now, the OPV adjustment screw on this machine is actually on the exterior. So we've got it right up here, right near the water reservoir. But the best way to check where your pump is set is to create a static closed system using our back flush disc. So we'll go right on ahead and slide out the drip tray and you can see there's this handy little storage area down here. You can use it for the back flush disc or if you have extra baskets, say you've got some nice precision ones that you swap to often, you can store them in this little spot right here in the frame. To get our back flush disc in, we'll just give that a quick tap and put the drip tray back on the machine. So let's go ahead and lock this in. And as we lift the lever, we'll see this gauge down here start to increase in pressure. And the OPV screw at the top lets you adjust. So we've got it at 10 where I want it, but we can maybe go a little bit higher. So to go higher, we'll just be turning the uh, screw up here to the right. And it's not like a huge jump. So you can see I'm making some pretty significant turns here and it's just taking a bit for that pressure to rise up. But I'm gonna go back down to around 10, which is where I want it. And that's how you would adjust the OPV and the pressure on the Classica PID.